I'm going to be talking about uh, the meta meta package, which is a way that you can calculate the statistical power of studies included in the meta analysis. And this, this is a really good example of creating a package to scratch your own itch. This is one of those things that I was like, I wish there was a thing that could actually solve this problem. And it started off as me putting together a function. And I thought, hang on a minute, I can actually turn this into a package because if this is something that I want to solve myself, there's a very good chance that other people want to solve this. And uh, it was just, yeah, I thought it was just a great experience for the first time uh, putting together a package and uh, made me appreciate all the hard work that um, people like Wolfgang and James do when it comes to their, 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 their very their, their packages, which can, which contain a whole bunch of functions. Because this this particular package only contains three, three or four, so it's quite small in comparison. But uh, yeah, so it, it was a, it was a great experience for um, trying trying to actually solve a problem that I had, and thinking that it can be helpful for other people to solve their problem. So one of the most common things that you hear when you talk about meta-analysis is people say, oh, yes, it is, it is garbage in and garbage out. You have to be very careful about the sorts of studies that you include in your meta-analysis. A really good example recently is there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of discussion at the moment about the use of ivermectin to treat, uh, to, 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 to treat COVID. And a lot of this is based on a, um, on, a, on a preprint or based on a lot of preprints on some very questionable meta-analyses which include very very questionable studies um, and when you take a close look at these meta-analyses for example once you actually remove these questionable studies there seems to be almost no effect of ivermectin um, but when it comes to actually doing meta-analyses in general one thing we always have to consider when it comes to including or what studies to include is how do we actually set our thresholds of the studies to include and for the studies that we're including how do we actually understand the, the, the evidentiary value of the studies that we're including? Um, and a, a lot of these things, I mean, there's a quite, quite a lot of checklists that are available for the sorts of ways you can actually look at study quality. Um, quite a lot of these things have a certain element of, um, of subjectivity. Now, one thing that I wanted to look at, or one thing that, that is quite a big concern in primary research is statistical power. There's been paper after paper looking at different research fields, which, which all come to the same conclusion in that most research is statistically underpowered. Now, when we're talking about statistical underpower, it is essentially the probability of observing a statistically significant effect given a sample size, an alpha level, which is typically 0.05, and a true effect size. And the reason this is quite an issue is that low statistical power increases the chances of false positives and false negatives. Uh, conventionally, in a lot of research fields, they, you tend to aim for 80% statistical power in other fields, up to 90 or 95%. But for a lot of fields, it's 80% statistical power. However, when you look uh, across um, psychology and neurosciences, um, quite, quite a lot of these papers, the median power is around 20%. Um, and it's been slowly improving, but still in a lot of areas, it hasn't improved much at all, which is a, ma which is a massive concern. Um, because we have this much larger risk of uh, false positives and false negatives. Um, I came across this, um, this way of visualizing power for meta-analysis studies. So say you, you run a meta-analysis um, and for assuming that the summary effect size is the true effect size, and we're gonna come back to that issue a little bit later, um, you can actually calculate um, the, or you can calculate and visualize the power for, for all the studies included using uh, this, it's called a sunset plot, which is essentially an adapted funnel plot, which you, which you may have seen. Funnel plots are quite common in meta-analysis, but the sunset plots are an adapted funnel plot and it calculates the power corresponding to a, uh, to a given standard error. And it's used by, uh, by a, a two-sided wall test. So you can actually see, looking at this figure here, that there is quite a range of statistical power. Uh, so there's a few studies which are around that 80% mark, but quite a lot of these studies in this example meta-analysis have quite low statistical power. Now, by default, um, you, you can actually specify what the true effect size is for the sunset plots, but, but by default, it uses the summary effect size. Um, publication bias and effect, effect size inflation is, is a massive issue in the biobehavioral sciences. Here's a great visualization which shows on the top 
the studies which don't have pre-registration and the effect sizes that you find. But magically, once studies begin getting pre-registered, they magically shrink because by pre we, we, when you actually pre-register your studies, you're reducing analytical flexibility. And once you reduce analytical flexibility, um, then your ability to use questionable research practices to get your study across that magical 0.05 threshold is reduced. So we have this big issue within a lot of the sciences in that a lot of the effect sizes that we're reporting are inflated. And this is implications for meta-analysis, obviously. So the summary effect sizes that you see in a meta-analysis um, if you're not accounting for publication bias can be inflated. Uh, there are various approaches for creating effect sizes which are adjusted for publication bias. That's not the topic of this talk. Uh, so you can do that. But if you're not actually doing any adjustments for, for publication bias, then there's a very good chance that the effect size that you, um, uh, the, the, the summary effect size is in, inflated from what the true effect size is. So this is implications if you're going to actually calculate power. So if you look, look looking back here and you're calculating power based on the summary effect size, then um, this may actually be an inaccurate um, reflection of what the statistical power of a study is. So if we're looking at a primary research study, uh, one really good way of thinking about power is that it sits on a curve and power this, the sensitivity of your test changes depending on what your hypothetical effect size is. So in this given example, uh, if your hypothetical effect size is 0.05, then you have quite high statistical power. Uh, and it's even higher if your hypothetical effect size is larger. Um, but, if it's, um, but if your hypothetical effect size, um, which in the psychological sciences at least tend to be quite small, um, then your power is quite small as well. So it's really important to, to consider and think carefully about what true effect size that you're using. Okay, so this, this brings us to um, how we actually would do our analysis within MetaMeta or within the package. So say we have uh, a series of studies and a series of effect sizes, which is in the YI column. And we have a, um, uh, there, there are two main ways that you can analyze and enter your data. The first way is by entering your effect sizes for each study and your lower um, confidence interval and your upper confidence interval. And the great thing about this is these things, uh, this is commonly reported in meta-analysis. So for instance, here is just the, the, the sort of output that you would typically see in a meta-analysis. Uh, we have our effect size and we have our upper and lower limit. So all we have to do is extract these values from a reported meta-analysis. But of course, if you wanna run this on your own meta-analysis, you can do it yourself. So one of the main, there, there are two main ways why I created this tool. One is to assess published meta-analysis to look at the evidence to, to look at the evidential value of published meta-analysis but also to actually apply it to meta-analyses that you're running uh, we've just published a preprint which um, for the, which for the first time we've actually applied this tool and it's really interesting actually looking at the power of studies that we included so here's another example um, of the sort of data you would see reported in a meta-analysis where you have a, a, a effect size and a measure of standard error the meta-meta package can use both approaches either upper or lower limit or a measure of standard error. Okay, so the implementation is, 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 quite, is quite straightforward. Um, within the package, I've included a few um, uh, example data sets. These are real data sets, by the way. Um, and so for instance, for the MA underscore UL uh, function, we, are in, we, we were including the data set, um, which is dat underscore keach. Uh, we're entering the observed effect size. Um, so you can actually compare the observed effect size along with a range of true effect sizes. So in this particular meta-analysis, it was 0.08. And we also include the name of the meta-analysis, which is useful for other functions. Uh, and then what we get is uh, a range of statistical powers. So in the first column, we have assuming that the observed effect size is the true effect size, then we can actually see that for this particular study, um, uh, uh, then for, for, these, for, for the studies included in this meta-analysis, most of uh, the statistical power is quite low, hovering around sort of 0.5% to, to 10%. And then we can actually see for a given range of assumed true effect sizes, what the power is. So like I said before, this can actually change and adjust based on what your assumed true effect size is. So this ranges from, um, uh, the point, uh, point, point, point 0.1 to point 0.2 to point 0.3, 
all the way to effect size of one. And you can see how these things are ranging. So if you're assuming that the effect size is, is one, um, then some of these studies do get that threshold of 80% statistical power. Now, one of the reasons that, um, that, that I put together this package is to actually see what would be what would be the power for a range of effect sizes. Um, and I think this is going to be quite interesting for actually reporting your own meta-analysis because what you would consider to be the, the true effect size or an interesting effect size might be different um, d d d depending on, on your background or how you consider the state of the research field to be. So by being transparent, and actually reporting for a range of true effect sizes, people can actually come in and evaluate going, well, I think the true effect size for this study, or I think the, the, an interesting effect size would be, um, would be 0.2, for instance. And you can actually see what the power would be for a range of studies, assuming it is 0.2, or maybe you think it's 0.5, it doesn't matter. What, what it does give you is a level of transparency. So you can actually see for a given range of true effect sizes, what the statistical power is gonna be. And then what you can do, is um, you can actually visualize. So um, you can do this for one or more meta-analyses. So what we're seeing here is three different, um, different meta-analyses. And for each of these three different meta-analyses, what, what, what the package does is it visualizes the median power for every study included in the meta-analysis. So for the Uy et al, Keech and Bakerman's and Skranenberg, uh, let, let, let's say each of those have 10 studies in them. And what we're seeing here is a visualization of the median power of all the studies there. So at a glance, you can actually see, so I, I originally put this together to see for a given research field, if, if a given research field has 10 meta-analyses at a single glance, you can actually see, okay, for all the studies included in these meta-analyses, what is the statistical power for these studies assuming a range of effect sizes? So we can see here that we've got the observed, uh, assuming that the observed effect size is the true effect size and also a range of effect sizes here. And of course, uh, another alternative is you can simply just, um, just report, um, if you're doing your own meta-analysis and want to report that, you can just do uh, one, uh, one, one column. You can, you can actually visualize for yourself and you can say, okay, um, for, so let, let's say we were taking the, um, the Keech study and, and we we're running that and we we're reporting that. Um, here we can actually see, well, assuming an effect size of around 0.7, then maybe, maybe the studies here on average had quite high statistical power. Um, but then assuming that uh, for, your, for your research field, if you think the effect sizes are quite small, then your power is quite small on average. Um, so there's various ways that you can, that you can use this. Um, so yeah, in, implementing this is, is, is relatively straightforward. So you have to um, use one of the functions, either the standard error or the upper and low, lower limit function. Um, and then uh, doing that, you can create create a list and simply run the fire punk, firepower function on that list and you can visualize that. So that can be multiple meta-analyses or you can just do a single analysis if, if you're working on that for yourself and reporting. So I want to give uh, a practical example. Um, um, as, as Wolfgang mentioned, I do a lot of research on the neuropeptide oxytocin and this particular neuropeptide has been the subject of considerable hype and there's been a lot of research done on this on ways um, that it could potentially used as a treatment for autism spectrum disorders or schizophrenia, essentially any disorder which is characterized by social dysfunction. So there's been a lot of research looking at its potential to, um, to, to, to treat these illnesses. Um, however, um, there's been some criticism that a lot of these studies have been underpowered and um, uh, a lot of that criticism is quite warranted. Things are improving in the field. So I wanted to have a look at, um, for all the meta-analyses that have been published in this field, what is the statistical power overall? Um, and so in the course of actually putting together this paper, that's when I wrote the function, which eventually evolved into the actual package. So that's kind of a, a history of it. So this, this included, I think it was about 18 or, or, or 20 or, or, or 25 meta-analyses in total. And uh, I've run the, 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 the firepower um, function and you can see at least for some of these meta-analyses, um, assuming a, 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 an effect size of say 0 0.3 or 0.4, then yeah, then, then maybe we're hitting that 80% statistical power um, threshold. But for a lot of the meta-analyses, you can actually see that um, that's not necessarily the case. So this is a really handy way of getting an overview of a given research field and actually saying, what is the median um, statistical power 
uh, for uh, for this field. So once you actually, so instead of actually um, uh, going into every individual study, you can actually extract the statistics or you can extract what's been reported in meta-analysis and you can do it yourself. Yeah, 35 meta-analyses, so 107 studies. So it's a really, really straightforward way of, um, of, of reporting this. So uh, on average, the power, statistical power was 12.8, which is, which is terrible. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, the, the field is, um, is, is, is improving. Uh, but, this, uh, but still, there are still studies published which have low power. Uh, so yeah, uh, there are a few limitations with the package. Um, of course, it can be difficult. This is, this is a whole other debate. It can be difficult actually determ determining what a worthwhile or important true effect size is, but at least with the analysis, it gives you, uh, it gives you a range of options. Um, oh, gone ahead a bit. Yeah, and of course, this approach assumes that, so if you're taking the approach where you are extracting data straight from published meta-analysis it assumes that the original meta-analysis was accurate and we've, i'm sure we've all seen instances where um there are some clear errors in in what's been reported in meta-analysis with numbers that simply don't make sense so there is a risk if you're doing this and if you're extracting data that you're extracting incorrect data um, of course if, if you wanted to do this you could go in and you can recalculate these numbers yourself um, but that would take a lot of time if you want to do that However, if you're doing it and you're simply extracting numbers that have been reported in, in meta-analysis, um, then that's one risk that, um, that you're taking there. So uh, if you're interested, I, I encourage you um, to, to take meta-meta for a spin, put in your own data, use some of the example data that's there. And um, if you're thinking you're doing meta-analysis, then you can, you can report your, you can extract your data and you can create your firepower plot and you can include that within your study. Um, so yes, um, there's, as, as if I talk about meta-analysis a lot on, uh, on, uh, on, on Twitter uh, and on the podcast and yet my co-host is, is not a fan. So that leads to some very, very interesting discussions. So yes, very interested to hear any questions that people uh, may have and uh, thanks all for your attention.